Good morning, fam. So, um, I am doing this video to follow up on a post I did yesterday concerning pre-med um, student advice. I woke up this morning to tons of emails, test messages, um, private messages on Facebook, and I figured I would go ahead and explain what I meant. Many people wrote, well, will you have any advice for people in med or law school or, or are interested in law school or grad school? And honestly, this really applies to anyone interested in doing a graduate program. So my advice is very simple. College students, we don't often, as adults, we don't really do a great job at getting you prepared for the real world and how to get yourself ready to be a successful person with as little stress as possible. So these are the things that I learned along the way. I also didn't have much of a, um, a structure in place to tell me what steps to take. And so I'm trying to take the guesswork out for you. So in college, what you need to do is plan, 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 right? And that means setting yourself up with goals. And I like to break them down into short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals, something that you can check off a box to say, I completed. So your short-term goals, these are very simple. The main one is your letters of recommendation. Now, everyone knows that they have to have letters, but what unfortunately tends to happen is that your senior year, you go running back to that freshman teacher and say, hey, can I get a letter of recommendation from you? And quite honestly, I wanna say this on behalf of all mentors and advisors, we don't necessarily remember you are your strengths at that point because we've met a hundred people in between the four years that we knew you and that's not to say that you're not a great person it's just to say that time does things with the mind so what i advise you to do in your short-term goal is literally every semester at least once a year you go to your teacher your favorite teacher the one that you've gotten to know the one that you actually interacted in, in class with if you're sitting in the back of the class and you've never raised your hand do not ask that teacher. That's not the one, right? But the one that you've actually gotten to know, you've, you've volunteered in their lab, you've done research with them, ask that teacher that semester while you're in the class, midway through and say, hey, you know, my name is Ebony. I'm really interested in going to medical school and I've enjoyed immensely my time here in your class and the learning that I've, uh, I've been um, pleasured to do. <laughs> Would you mind writing me a letter of recommendation? Here is my personal statement and here is my resume. When I say personal statement and resume, what I do realize is that you are a freshman in college. So your resume may only consist of the National Beta Club and the fact that you're a prom king or queen. Put it, all right? If you picked up cans for two weeks on the side of church's chicken, put it. My thing is, is that I just need to see what you've been doing these short 18 years of your life, right? The other thing with the personal statement, it doesn't need to be in depth. I just want to know who you are. What's your family structure? Tell me your testimony. If you've overcome any adversity, tell me like that gives me a personal sense of what i can write in your in your letter of recommendation so it can come from my heart so again short-term goals letters of recommendation at least one per year but if you can get one per semester then fantastic because by the time you're a senior you can have four to six letters of recommendation easy right takes the stress off midterm goals and the midterm goals i break up into a number of different categories one is going to be your volunteering and your shadowing experience especially for med students what i need to see are people interested in going to medical school what i need to see is that you actually care about the community that you want to serve right so how are you giving your time now oftentimes i get wrote um can people come and shadow me and i and i absolutely love it i do enjoy seeing students see a procedure for the first time and the excitement that comes in their eyes is just something that I enjoy but I am one person so when there's you know many different people trying to shadow for that day I have a difficult time doing it so what I say is that you don't necessarily have to just shadow the person that you are interested in that field like if you want to be an anesthesiologist you can also go and shadow a dermatologist family medicine um, a, a surgeon an OBGYN especially for you females you have an OBGYN ask them hi we know each other very intimately and do a long dramatic pause like that we know each other very intimately is there any way that you would that you would serve as my mentor where I can come in and do a shadow you for just a day now here's the thing just a day means just a day i would love to have people come and shout at me for a week at a time but quite honestly i'm working so 
usually just a few hours of the day can give you that exposure that you need and give you that that thing to write on your application say hey I've invested my time in trying to learn more about this field of medicine and it doesn't just have to be with the physician go to your fire department and say hey can I do a ride along to see what you how you interact with these people who call you in desperate need EMT is the same thing right go ask them can I ride along with you can I see what you do if you're in college, every college has a clinic, right? Go to the clinic, the place that you go when you get the sniffles and say, can I volunteer here? Can I come in and see how this clinic works? I just need to see when you're, when you're applying to medical school, I just need to see that you put in the effort. And the main thing with this volunteering and shadowing um, opportunity is that you must document. And I mean document everything. You need to document who you shadowed, where it was, what date, what time it was, how much time you spent, and what you saw, smelled, tasted, touched, everything. Because if you don't document, it doesn't happen. That's, that's the way it goes. And if you're documenting along the way, keep a little Excel sheet. If you document it wrong way, then when it comes down, you may have only shadowed me, for instance, for two hours. But if you shadow 15 other people for two hours each, that's 30 hours total that you can put in your application and it looks stellar. Document, 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 shadow everyone and do not take no for an answer. They have a way to make it happen. So that's that. The next um, midterm goal is going to be your research. Now, if you ask every med student, everyone applying for residency programs, they'll always say, oh, yes, I love research because that's what we are told to say on our application. Truth of the matter is, most of us don't, okay? I'm not a huge fan of, of, of lab research, but I love clinical research. I love interacting with people. Now, the thing is, is if you don't love research, that's okay. Don't fret, but still do. And I'm going to say that again. Don't fret, but still do. You need to have some form of research on your application to make it stand out. Now, it can be in anything, you, right? There, there are several opportunities if you go around your college and say, hey, is there a survey you're doing with people? Go to your chemistry teacher. Ask them, can you do some bench work with them? It's, it's really quite fun, actually. But there are programs, especially during the summertime when you're thinking about your midterm goals, there are programs that are offered by nearly every major university called the Summer Undergraduate Research Program. Type it up for, for MUSC, for Duke, for UNC, all over. And these programs are great in that they're actually paid. You're a college student. You're broke. Go to these, these programs. They have $4,000, $5,000 for 10 weeks of you doing research and making your application that much greater. It's a win-win in every situation. They pay for your housing. They pay for your traveling. So go. But you have to be proactive. These programs usually have a deadline of January or December of the year before. So what you need to do is be planning again, like you have to do everything in life as an adult, you have to plan for what you want. And so if you know that that summer you're going to be free, go ahead, December, January, go ahead and put in your application so you can get paid and have something that really stands out on your resume. Now, that's some midterm goals. The, the next midterm goals is mission work. I cannot tell you how much joy it brings me when I see someone has mission work on their application for this reason. Not only does it help you learn about this global sense of the world and how we need to take care of each other because we, we really do. We're much stronger together. But it, it shows me, it allows you, mission work allows you to grow in a personal way that is unmatched by anything I've ever experienced, right? And there's tons of different opportunities. Habitat for Humanities has opportunities. You can go to any church, major church. They're usually doing some type of mission work. Um, it's great if you can travel abroad. You don't have to necessarily travel abroad. There's things that you can do in your own community. But there's tons of programs that allow you to go to Uganda, to, to Tanzania, to Nicaragua. It, all these places that you would have otherwise probably never have seen. And it's a great way. And it's a great interview piece. I can talk to you all day about, well, how was Taiwan? What did you do there? What, what did you learn? You know, um, and there's many different groups. Like I said, you can go to churches, you can go to Habitat for Humanity, Red Cross. Um, there's local places as far as in Charleston, like the PMI group. Um, if you look them up, they go to Uganda. I see quite often. I haven't been able to volunteer with them yet, but I am going to because it's an exciting thing to do with your life. So again, that's midterm goals. Midterm goals is going to be your research, um, research experience, your mission work, right? Medical missions, 
and also your volunteer shadowing experiences. Document, document, document. So that's midterm. Long-term goals are going to be studying for the MCAT. That's something that you're going to do throughout your college career, studying for this thing, right? So the thing is with studying for the MCAT is that every class prepares you for this test. Now, there I'm going to list a number of different links below that um, – have free online uh, our free online um, practice tests that you can take there there are so many different resources out there that I think people just don't know about but what I would I would really recommend you do is to go to a person who is a freshman in medical school because they just took this test right they know what's on the test they know what it's like and ask them how did you study for it and as a matter of fact do you still have your books because you don't need them anymore, right? So get those books from them, get those resources and study along the way. That way, with if you do all these things, as far as your short-term, your mid-term, your long-term goals, the stress of applying to medical school will be hugely relieved because you're not piling it on yourself all at once your junior and senior year of college. That's the time you're supposed to be actually having a good time traveling. Another thing I would recommend as far as your long-term goals is that Anything, I think long-term goals, I had to pay my way through college. That was a long-term thing to do. Um, as far as any extra spending money, I had two jobs throughout college. So any job that I had, though, was a job that looked good on my resume for medical school. That was my end goal, and I was a hustler to get it, right? So that meant if I was going to have a job, it was going to be tutoring, because tutoring looks good on my application, right? If I was going to have a job, it was going to be working in that research lab. Again, it looks good on my application. You working at Starbucks, don't get me wrong, I love Starbucks like anybody else. But Starbucks is not going to look as good on your application as some of these other things. So go in the hospital, be a patient transporter, work in the research lab of the hospital, be be a patient care tech, Any. Anything that you can possibly do, because in the hospital, every single job is important. If the cleaning staff doesn't clean up the hospital, that increases the rate of infection. Our nursing staff, our, our nurses aides, everyone is important. And as a physician, when I look at students that are coming in, if they had that training level, if they participated as an EMT before, it shows me that one, you understand the, the nature of the community of medicine and that we again are stronger together and so these are my very quick tips I have to go to work <laughs> but very quick tips on how you can improve your chances of being successful in applying to medical school or any graduate school and how you can just decrease the amount of stress that comes down and in, in guessing how do I make it happen keep your short term your midterm and your long-term goals as a priority in your life have a great day